Hello, hello, hello. I'm battling with this green screen this morning. Uh, who do we have? We have two people. How you doing, guys? Let me know if everything works for you. I'm just going to try to... Sunshine is changing every two minutes here. Too much light, not enough light. I'm going to have to buy a proper studio. <laughs> All right. How is everyone? Hello, Nino. How you doing? Not expecting too many people. Um, Dirk, how you doing? It's Sunday. People have better things to do than come and see me, but that's the only bit of time I have to do that. Loud and clear. Thank you, Nino. So, so yeah. Uh, I still have people in the guest house at the moment, so I need to get cooking after and uh, attend to the client. But for the moment, I have a few hours spare. So I am ringing up uh, my lures for the winter, uh, changing the hooks, changing the leaders. So I know I got a few people that are interested uh, because there's not only fly guys that are following me on this channel. There's uh, mixed anglers as well, guys that still fish some lure and uh, still enjoy uh, doing different things. Keep working, you know. <laughs> uh, I won't tell your boss. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I am definitely not just a lure guy, a uh, lure or fly guy. I definitely, my, my favorite method would be the fly if I can go and catch pike. But uh, coming the winter here, you have to be realistic. Uh, the windows for the fly are smaller and smaller. It's more and more difficult to get them on the fly. And uh, the lures are definitely taking over um, in terms of effectiveness to catch big fish. So either way, you like struggling and uh, putting long hours for, for big fish. Uh, but I like to catch. And uh, the other thing as well, because I work as a guide here and uh, I have countless people coming fishing with me uh, and coming to the guest house, the, I need to kind of keep up to what's going on in the lure, lure world um, so I need to know like uh, what's working how it's working uh, things that can be improved uh, so like that I can put clients on fish because it's not just uh, fly guys that come to fish here at the lodge there's also lure guys guys that like to fish with dead bait so I kind of have to to know a little bit of everything uh, but again, my favorite method would be the fly. But in the winter, I like to come back to the lure. I still have that sentimental value with lure fishing uh, that I had. Uh, that's how I started, basically. So I do still enjoy lure fishing. And there's no denial in winter here. They do get you much, much bigger fish and uh, on a more regular basis than the fly. But uh, don't panic too much, fly guys. Uh, if there is... Uh, Definitely an opening in the in the in the weather here in the winter time. The fly rod is with me on the boat, so I will definitely do some fly as well. But my main thing now it's uh, to get into the lure and especially the big big bait. Um, I really like fishing um, big rubber baits in the winter, simply because they are very effective. So um, I have received some there to complete the the collection. I'm fixing some lures and sharpening hooks and rigging putting new uh tippet on the lures on the line trues so like i said i know some people are interested quite a few of uh, the, the the clients that come here are interested in the, the aspect of the lure fishing that i do um, and um, how i do it so i'm going to start with this big line true this is the one i received uh this week so definitely the rigging like savage gear like most everything savage gear i think uh, the rigging is is ridiculous uh, the lures are fantastic but the rigging just let them down uh, I like this i think how much they retail now i think they retail for 60 euro now these big lures so to have them rigged like that for 60 euro it's ridiculous because they could put a few extra extra euro on it and give you a good rigging but 
I don't know. Anyway, if you do want to try these big lures, uh, definitely my advice would be change the rigging. Start from new and do it yourself. Alright, I'll take him out. I'm gonna have a look at the original rigging that it comes with. So, now they are laying true, so the fact is that when the pike take the bait, the hooks pop out of the, the lure. And that like that, your, your lure lasts a lot longer and uh, doesn't get bitten off. And the pike can't help himself uh, on hooking himself with a lure stuck inside uh, with, the, with the hook. They can't pry their jaw open. So... Before they used to come with a little quick release harness that was inside and I really liked the idea. Uh, even I thought the, the harness was a little bit too short for my liking. Uh, I changed it and made a bigger one. i show you here. This is, this is another one here. I'm gonna swap that camera if I can for you guys. Uh, give me a sec. Swap it so you see from my side. Way much better. All right. So this is one that's already rigged, and uh, the harness I'm talking is this little little clip here that you have, just made out of stainless steel wire. Just lodge itself inside the bait, and what that does, it just leaves the the hook dangling nice and proud underneath you get a much better hookup when it's like this than having them stuck inside the body like this one i really do not like that uh, you cut the fins uh dirk i never cut the fins i got away with it they are well mashed up i have to I have to uh, weld them back, but I have no, I had no problem with the fins uh, and hook up. Uh, I had very little, if if no no mist. Uh, usually it's a small fish that that misses the the two hooks, but I know some people put three hooks on those. Uh, I find two big hooks as long as they are dangling down a little bit. Uh, they they work for me. I have no problem losing them. Uh, But this one, this rig now that they sell without the harness, I think that that's just shocking now. I even was looking at the at the way it's crimped, and it's it's just absolutely terrible. I don't know if I can get that close to you. Probably not. I don't have the good lens. But it's it's an absolute joke. Like look at that crimp. Like I don't know. It's like one single crimp that's actually broke in the middle. I don't know. I just I just don't like that. Uh, no, not for me. Yeah, I'll have to I'll have to check if it, if it's just to uh, to for the hooking power. I have no problem for for hooking fish on that. So, but if it becomes an issue, definitely I keep that in mind, Dirk. Um, interesting too. That's why I like to do these things because we can kind of have a look at different different ways we use different things. So that's interesting that you say that. I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm not gonna keep their their wire. I'm just gonna bin that wire as well. I basically just bin everything that it comes with. The hooks are not too bad actually. Uh, the only problem with the hooks, I don't find them particularly super sharp out of out of the box. So I like usually to to sharpen them again.
So yeah, November. I haven't done a, a stream in quite quite a few months. Been well busy here, thank God. Back to normal after the the lockdowns. Now I usually get excited by about November because it's uh, it's finally the month for me where I can start to get ready and go out fishing because I'm nearly finished with the guest house here. So that's a good thing for me. I'm dying to get out. I haven't been out in such a while. So, okay. I'm going to keep the hooks. I'm going to rig them again. So instead of having the hook that comes, I think if you have the their way of having the hooks, you would be like this. I like to push this hook as much forward as possible. Um, Stephen, how you doing? Uh, is that the way you are rigging the big, lure, the big lures the same way as the smaller lures? Yeah, smaller lures, uh, I rig them the same way. Uh, hold on. I presume you, you speak about the line through. These are the, the other line throughs. That's the smaller one. And again, rigged again the same way with the harness. At the front, the quick release harness here, and then the trailer at the back on the pin. So two hooks are actually dangling down and not stuck inside the bait. Same thing with the, with the big rattle. Same thing, these things used to come with, with the harness as well. Harness at the front and then the trailer hook at the back. Simple. But the only one thing that I would do with this is uh, I try to get my, my, my front hook as forward as I can. Uh, so when I, you can't go further than the, the hole where the wire is going to come out for the harness to be attached to. So this is as much as I can come close to that hole to put the harness. I like to put it closer to the head. Uh, I found that uh, those big, big fish that follows this kind of prey, they usually hit them square in the head. They go for the kill, the kill shot. Uh, because I, I troll fairly slow in the winter, like, you know, two and a half up to three kilometers per hour. So it's a fairly slow trolling speed. So big pike have a time to come behind these lures, follow them. Um, you can see a lot of videos on YouTube with the with the river, uh, with, with the, the water wolf uh, cameras. Some of them, it's impressive to see how long those big pike can follow these lures before they hit. And sometimes they usually like to come and hit pretty close to the head. Most of my hits uh, come from that side anyway. So I usually like to push, instead of having the hook down here, I like to push it further up like that. And I never really had a problem with uh, pike just biting on the on the tail. Uh, usually they would be small pike anyway, which I'm not interested to catch them. So uh, let's see. Uh, Dirk, yes, the fishing here, it's been very, very changeable as well. Uh, what happened here is that we had, uh, we've, uh, when was it? About 10 days ago to two weeks ago, uh, we had, um, I think what would I would call here like the, the, the water turnover. So we had a really, really high amount of, uh, of rain and some cold weather coming. Uh, actually, last uh, this week, we had two nights with frost. One really good night with a really good, nice grass frost. So the pike uh, two weeks ago were completely summer, summer mode. Uh, they were in the margins, in the lily pads fat in the grass because all that uh, greenery ha hasn't died because the weather has been so nice so they were still moving around in the shallows so techniques that work uh, fly the fly worked well uh, small uh, I mean small lures like 10 centimeter 12 centimeter plus soft plastic uh, mounted uh, on, a, on a Texan Texan hook with less right in the in the weeds uh, that's where most of the fish came from uh, now that we had all this water and the level have gone up uh, all these fish are like they've gone completely 
all around the lake. Uh, we catch some deep, we catch some in the middle, high, uh, still some in the margins. So it's really hard to, really hard to know uh, what are there. Uh, I don't think they are like in winter mode here yet. They are like just in the between, they're in the transition. Uh, we still catch some big pike that are quite skinny. Uh, but I had reports yesterday of guys that they fished one lake and uh, most of the they, they caught a load of pike they, i think they had 40 fish at uh, three of them and they had uh, mostly small jacks but all the jacks were hit like they all had marks so this is not like uh, spawning time at this time of the year that's when the big fish the big hands went on the on the hunt on that lake and definitely on that smaller shallower lake they'll be the first one to have the turnover and that's where uh, big fish will start feeding first and then moving on to the deeper lake after uh, until they start gaining uh, and joining rejoining their winter quarters um, as long as the the grass the winter cabbage the cabbage i mean um, the lily pads are still green there's still life in the margin so they're gonna still gonna hang on that on that shelf and as soon as that vegetation is going to die, they're going to go, they're going to start from the shadows and then they're going to get pushed. As soon as that vegetation dies off, they're going to push themselves back down to the to the break and then they're going to go to the deeper place uh, once the, the roach starts gathering and we start to see these huge, uh, big winter fat balls of bait fish. But uh, it hasn't happened yet here. So uh, we're just on the tip uh it's gonna happen fairly soon so that's why i'm excited too because november is the month where i finish working but it's also the month that the weather changes before it used to be october everybody was betting on october to be the the prime months for pike but uh year after year october is being pushed over by november now so the good spot now is i think it's starting to be in november mid-november even late november to get the big fish so Hopefully the, the, the weather stays the same and we can we can catch some fish. So, okay. So what I'm going to do for this one, let's get to this. Um, I'm going to use wire wise. I'm using uh, my usual uh, bleeding wire, uh, but this one is a 60 pound bleeding wire. So beefed up than the one I use for fly. Fly I use 30 pound. This is the 60 pound. Uh, now for the harness, it's going to be the first thing we're going to do. I'm going to do uh, some spring wire, some stainless steel wire. This is a full one mil. Uh, you want you want it to have to have this nice and thick, as thick as you can. I think you can do 1.2, 1.3 mil if you want to. Like you know, but I found the the one mil is plenty enough. It gets bent a bit, but you can bend it back to shape, no problem. I'm just going to get this one just as a for size so all you need is a pair of pliers round nose plier uh, just to loop a vice grips is handy no more pair of pliers flat nose and a crimping tool for for the crimps so we have one and loop try to go on camera it'll be easier one mil is still walkable by hand so it's not too bad like Oh, two. just one normal loop simple so that's going to go on the bottom of the belly here and just measure up to where the harness is going to go inside the bait into the hard part <laughs> that's okay Dirk you didn't keep me from my vid <laughs> But yeah, definitely November is the new October. So I'm gonna wrap this one. So all I did, 
I just made a second loop at the bottom, just measuring the length here. Gonna wrap that one a few times around just to secure it. I actually cut the end the tag end there, be easier. Now fairly easy to make anyway. I'll wrap that two times, three times around. Now we're going to bend it. Now the first bend is that, is that bad? I'll just give a quick measure for you. Yeah, about 12, 12, 13 mil away from the eye. That's where I do the, the bend and that's where the harness is going to go inside. Not too long, about 15, 20 mil max. There you go, that's, that's all we need to do. Very simple. And they used to come with this harness. So obviously they're uh, cutting around the corners and, and, and trying to make more money uh, some way but I don't see how much money they are saving uh, it's a bit of a pity to sell such an expensive lure like that never mind all right we need split rings And actually, I'm going to make the pin for the back as well. So you can buy them pre-made. There's quite a, a few, a few brands, fishing brand that do them pre-made now. The pins just to stick it at the back for the for the trailer hook. But I mean, like, a bit crazy to to buy them when you can make them yourself. Like, it takes two seconds to make a pin. I suppose the only thing here you want to make sure you make the the loop big enough to be able to put your your split ring in and that there's a good free movement in it. It's going to get it straight now. And that's going to be just the pin that's going to go at the back, just to hold the back hook. So I just crimp the wire uh, for this. I like crimping the wire. Um, I don't double pass the wire in the crimp. Uh, I just use two crimps just to be safe one crimp i'm not too mad about having just one crimp i'm a bit afraid i don't really trust them uh, but two crimps i do trust them if there's two so and as uh, i know a lot of people are worried about discretion and using fluorocarbon for these lures uh, when they troll but uh, i've been using that like for, for forever here and i had no problem like that i still have a good ratio of, of, of fish caught like so I bring that in and get our bleeding wire, push it through, let it come out here. 
and I'm going to crimp it straight onto the harness, this one. So for this I use, uh, for the 60 pound wire, I have 1.6 mil crimps and it seems to be doing the job fine. A few out. So the first one you want to put is this one here. No, I'm saying stupid things. I'm looking at the camera, that's why. Okay, we're gonna put it here. Uh, not the one where you made the, the little hook, but the further one, the closed loop. I'm gonna double crimp that. Uh, this one I like to get it a little bit tight because I want to get it as close to the hole as possible. About like this. Let's see if I can zoom in a bit. There you go. That has yet to fail me, like, I had no problem. I change them maybe two or three times during the season, these rigs, because they get a little bit worn and thorn, and, and I had no problem, like, never lost a fish on it. Let's cut the tag end. Can cut it close, because we got two, two creams on that, so it's nice and solid. All right, so we have, so the 1.6 scrims, the good thing is that they go inside the bait as well, no problem. Now, I don't like using a um, shrink tube on my sleeves uh, or anything to hide my sleeves because I like to keep an eye on them. If they do crack, uh, if there's a split happening in them, I can see it. If you put a um, shrink tube over them, it looks nice, but you can't really see if there's a, a weakness in your crimping. So if you see that slipping or one is moving with shrink tube, you can't see that. So it uh, could be an accident bound to happen. So I leave the mine out like this, so I know exactly what's happening. And they go, no problem in it. There's no, it doesn't hold back. So this one's gonna go inside the hard body so it's just to find there you go so my first hook i'm going to put it i think uh, the original version they had they used to put their first hook here at that one but i like to bring mine further up like i said just for that for that headshot that they give you when they when they hit these lures I usually like to come and grab it here instead of here. Okay, we can finish up the the front. We don't need too much. I put about like 40 centimeter. And double crimp that one too at the top. And what I like to do on this one is at the tip to link onto my rod. I like to put a solid welded ring on the top. Again, I don't put any sleeves around. I don't put any thimble just because I like to be able to see what's happening and judge myself if I need to do the rig again because it's getting worn. I can see exactly what's going on. There you go, that's about. It. 
I'll crimp that. That's the top done. All right, we got the front sorted. Now we get to the harness, and we're gonna put the extension with the with the trailer hook. I like to push my trailer hook after the junction down here. Uh, if you see, I don't think uh, I think it's a, a little nipple here that's done by the by the mold, uh, but it's the perfect spot to put your your pin for the last hook and that brings the hook really towards the back of the bait instead of having it in that section i like to have it as much as the back as i can um, i think that's just nice and handy here so again i'm gonna pass i'll try to Zoom in for you. All right, I'm gonna get the wire here. We're gonna double crimp that wire again, straight onto the harness. And then we'll put split ring here with the hook. And at the back, we'll do another split ring. But for the moment, we're just gonna crimp this. two I keep everything nice and straight and now we're gonna go to the back and we want that to arrive about here so what you can do is mark it and give it a slight bend like this just a slight bend and so now you know where exactly you have to come And this one straight onto the pin. Now, if you've done your pins correctly, if you wrap them around with a proper wire, they are strong as anything. It's never gonna open open. crimp I'm just gonna cut the excess here and that's it I've got a link now back to front so now all we need to do is Put a split ring at the front of the harness here, and a split ring at the pin here, and that's gonna put the we're gonna put the hook on it. Put another one at the back. I'm just gonna. I was gonna go with the original hook on it, but uh, it feels like a butcher hook. That one, I rather put one of mine. I've been using those for for about uh, about two seasons, 
they're okay. I wouldn't rate them super highly, but they are, they do the job. Uh, you have to keep an eye on, on keeping them sharp though. They're not bad when they come out of the box, but still, you see, I, f I feel this one is not as great. Sometimes the difference between these big trebles and especially when your, your, fl your tie flies, you're used to have those really nice sharp hooks, premium, premium expensive fly hooks. And straight out of the box, you have nothing to do. But these big lure hooks and these big trebles, it's very unusual. They come out of the box like super sharp. The only brand that I had never had a problem on the big tre trebles like that is usually Owner or Gamagatsu. But Westin, they're okay, but like this one, definitely would it would take a little bit, a little bit of sharpening before I would go in the water. So that's about, that's the rig now all together. So I'm gonna put it back in. Yeah, definitely dark sea, see how it goes for you. It's it's all tuning and depends on, on, on your local fish how they how they do take this bait. Uh now nah, there you go. This is fully loaded. Now another thing I could do, uh, especially with this front hook. I might double up on the D on the split ring just to get an extra length. Um, see the front hook that it comes with; it's quite a long one, so it's uh, it's uh, further away from the from the bait. So yeah, I might add another split ring at the front just to push that hook down a little bit. for the bigger split ring for this one need the larger one so yeah uh, I'll be doing winter time I'll be doing a little bit of trolling uh, I don't like to troll the whole day long I find it boring so if I do find fish while I troll or an area that's interesting I will go back and then uh, cast lures on top of them um, and if the weather is good and if they're not too deep, because the problem that we have sometimes uh, to catch them on the fly is that they are used to be down at a certain depth and they won't come out from that depth. They just stay there. So, and the problem with the fly is that you're, you, because of the length, even if you cast your whole line, your whole fly line, you have 30 meters out. You're fishing in a place that's maybe 10, 15, 20 meters. So by the time your your fly goes down and you fast start stripping, it's going to go back straight up to the boat. And uh, quite often the pike, you can see them on the sonar, they're sitting here and they just don't go up or they go a little bit up. And as soon as it comes out of their nice water column, they just go back down. They're not interested in following. So that's why big lures, you can uh walk them at, at at those depth for longer time longer period of time especially when trolling and even on cast and retrieve you you can you can present the uh, a big rubber lure far better than than a fly um i'm not saying that you can't present a fly properly but not for the same length of time that's that's what i'm trying to say and this, this fish can be very tricky, very choosy in the winter time. So all right, we doubled up on the on the split ring there and I'm a little bit lower down. So I kind of like that a little bit better. All right. Well, that's, that's the big line through rigged up. That's the second one now. 
Uh, same system for the bream. This is not a good successful lure for me. Same thing with the bream. Goes back at the back there. Nail it. Two hooks. All these are nice, nice and retied, nice and fresh. Uh, what else? Talking big lures. I usually fish mostly big, big bait in the winter time. Uh, I just look for the maybe one fish a day, but hoping that it's uh, it's going to be a good one. So it's hard, it's hard fishing uh, because you're not always successful. So you have to be ready to to take it on the chin more than once. But it can has it can give you really really good rewards, like you know. So um, I know some people are interested in the in the lure that I use. So uh, trolling. Trolling, yes, it would be the line through, the rattle line through. Now these have a big paddle with a, a rattle inside. Um, those ones seem to do a lot better, like a, even like a big replicant. Um, they seem to be doing a lot better when it's the water is a little bit colored or we have um, a little bit of, um, of wind uh, when you have a nice chop on the water those paddle seems to do, do a lot better than the one with a flat tail like these guys so these ones um, like the line the line through trout usually clear water good condition i use these ones and if the water gets dirty, colored, and you get a big, big chop on the wind, I'll go for the paddle tail. Another thing that works, calm water, clear water, dirty water, wind, no wind. This is one of my all time favorite. uh the magnum dog the original bulldog but uh, this is the pro version so uh and actually that has made a big difference to my fishing compared to the original one um these work trolling and cast and retrieve pull pause i love fishing those on pull pause um the advantage the difference they have with the normal bulldog is that they are jointed inside the body and I had so much better catch rate with these guys than the the, the, the original one. Original one, the non-pro dog is a stiff one. You have a stiff wire inside. So all this part you cannot bend. It's nice and solid. You get only movement from the tail at the back, but the whole front here, it's, it's, it's really hard. And since they brought that flexible harness inside and you get that movement, these, these ones, have been like really really good i love i love fishing those i've, I've ordered a few more for this year um have them different colors but they cast well and i love really love fishing them you can walk them straight retrieve um but pull pause usually pull pause and i have to fix it uh, as you can see is he's got many 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 bites this one uh caught me my biggest fish last year this one um, another thing that I like to do, I made a video on that, um, is double, even treble the split ring on these guys and put a uh, shrink tube on it. So that will help the hooks not to catch each other. And it also helps the, the, the hook. That's a problem that you have most of the times that you cast and the hook catches the top of the head or catches the back here. And you braille back and and you missed the fish because the that hook was stuck up there so the fact of stiffening the hooks with um, shrink tubing and getting more length by adding split rings inside really helps uh, not get tangled and you get better hook up on this so that's that's another lure i really like using um, i use them on a, on a high retrieve lure uh, rod sorry uh, reel uh, I have a Trax 300 um, high high gear for that. Um, that's another one. That's of musky innovation again. 
This is the same thing, these are on a soft harness, so you get really nice flexible movement and that big paddle. So again, uh, fishing deep, these ones really, really good because they make a really nice noise. But if you look, they have a very thin tail connected to the panel and long. So the, the thump that you get in the water is not as aggressive as the, the rattle trout. So it's a little bit more discreet that um, so sometimes sometimes they don't like when it thumps too hard uh, in the water. So sometimes they like a little a lighter, a lighter uh, sound within the water. Again, same thing, change the hooks. I don't like the hooks they, they come with. So usually I do that to all my lures. And uh, for the lure itself, as you can see, uh, like on the fly, especially for the big lures, more important, I use a split ring. And um, on, my, on my leaders, I have a, a welded ring on it. So I just put the welded ring onto it. Very secure very secure i have no problem like that no problem losing bait uh, and fish so that kind of goes through most of the big bait that i use i have more of the these are by the way these are the shallow uh, swim dog and i think i have i have a deep one yeah this is the the shallow and the deep really good lures as you can see the deep is very narrow compared to the shallow one shallow one is nice and thick the deeper one, so cool, it sinks faster for this one. Uh, same thing, big long length, nice paddle, uh, and you get a really nice belly roll on this one. Really like this lure. Unfortunately, there's not too many places in Europe where you can buy them. Uh, I know people have asked me where do I get them. Well, I get them straight from Musk Innovation. Uh, it kind of it sucks to have to pay the the taxes and uh, and the shipping fee because they are not <laughs> very light to send uh, but they are lures that you're going to keep so make sure you fish with a strong braid these ones i fish with about 80 pound braid um, if you use a, a snap link use a decent snap link i would stay on the on the stay lock um, on the heavy side if you want to use snap link if not just do the welded ring like i do like this at the end and uh, onto a split ring like that you have a good safe sure connection uh what else braid 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 what braid i use uh, i use um power pro 80 pound on the on the cast and retrieve one and on the um, on the trolling i like the j braid this one uh i use it on this one is 26.5 kgs with 60 pounds i like to use a little bit lighter than the 80 pounds simply because it's a thinner diameter and uh, it helps when you want to get these lures a little bit deeper as well uh, i really like the multicolor you get a different color every 10 meters and every meter you get a little red mark really handy when you're trolling you know exactly how far your lure is at the back of the boat um, i've been using it for about three years three four years now that j braid and um all i can say it's uh yeah it's really good um it wears off a good bit uh i just do one season turn the reel around do a second season and then i bend the rest and i buy a new spool for the next time so i usually do two seasons per spool uh, but it's a good bread no problem i had no tangle with it um hassle free didn't break good uh, knot resistance so uh, no problem with this one so that's about it guys uh thanks for joining me today if you have um let's see what have i missed something no Defense? no i think i've read all the thing uh you're welcome stevens uh, i hope it helps a bit i know some people sometimes are a little bit uh scared by these big lures but um uh, uh they do work uh to the, to the point that I mostly fish that now in the winter time I hardly fish small lures uh, but they are really good at uh, at finding the big fish so not all the time but uh, they are really good if not I'll get the fly back out so expect this winter a mix of uh, fly fishing uh, if the weather is okay and uh, lure fishing in the in the upcoming vlogs 
if there's anything else that you guys want to see as usual uh, mention it in the comment section below if you want to see uh, another thing talked about uh, i know today there's, there's not too many people i'm sure there'll be more people watching this stream at a later time uh, but if you have questions, uh, put them in the comment section below and uh, I'll reply to it. And if you want another stream with something else, just give me a shout uh, either on Instagram or here on YouTube and uh, we'll do another one. I'm back uh, being busy with clients for another week and then I have a little bit of time for myself and then it's on the water. So thank you for joining me again, guys. I'll see you next time. And um, yeah, I suppose everybody's fishing today. It's nice and sunny here today. So enjoy. Thank you very much. I can't even remember how I finished the stream now. It's been such a long time. I think that's the button I need to click. All right, guys. No more question. I'll hang up in a minute. I'll just wait two seconds, see if there's a more question coming. And then I'll say goodbye. That's also a video I'll be making, sharpening your hook. Oh, I see so many people not sharpening their hooks. I see so many guys missing missing hits and they don't understand why they're not missing hits. Why are they missing fish? That's because your hook is lame. You need to sharpen your hook. Unfortunately, I don't see too many people doing it. So I'll be doing a video on how to sharpen the hook properly. All right, guys, been a pleasure again. Have a good Sunday and uh, I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye.